Hello everyone. I am Jahanavi Fanidar. I am from India and I am working under Dr. Bernard for the month of June. I am presenting the topic of electroencephalography or EEG, which is a common diagnostic method which we use in every neurology department. And that is why I chose the topic for my presentation. Our objectives for today are to go through the preliminary assessment, the recording system for which we use a EEG, the interpretation of EEG, the specialized techniques we use for uh, while conducting an EEG and the pitfalls of the EEG. In the preliminary assessment, the patient shall be advised to have regular sleep on the night before. No psychoactive substances such as nicotine, caffeine, or stimulants shall, shall be used. If he is using any psychoactive medications, he can use them the day before, but not on the same day as EEG. It is usually conducted in the morning after a light breakfast. The brief interview shall be conducted before the study to confirm the same. The room shall be calm and painted in light pink in which the uh, EEG is going to be conducted. For the recording system, there are two components, the electrode placement and the montages. In the electrode placement, we can see here the diagram showing two lines. One is a uh, one is this vertical line connecting nation to the anion, and the second line connecting the two preauricular points. And we have two circles along the lines. The regions are designated as frontal for F, C for central, T for temporal, P for parietal, and O for ocular. And there are also auricular regions, A, A. And the electrodes are numbered by with left side have the odd numbers and the right side will have the even numbers. G is used for the electrodes on the surgical line and P is used for pole, frontal pole one, for example, FP1. This is the international Kentucky system which is commonly used for the electrode placement on EEG. This is a figure showing the distance from the midline or coronal suture showing the 20, 20, 10 for the electro placement. There is another more extensive electro placement method, which is called the international can can system, which bypasses some of the uh, difficulties faced with the can tonki system, but it is not commonly used. Montages, there are two different types of montages that we use. First is the referential montage, which uses a common reference electrode for measuring the potential of all the channels. And there is a, another uh, type of uh, differential montage called common average reference montage in which we use the average of all electric all electrodes to create a, a baseline, which we subtract from each electrode that we are measuring. And there are there is a Laplacian uh, montage which uses the average of the closest electrodes to the electrode that we are interested in and weighted average references where the electrodes are weighted according to the according to the potential. There is another Montage system, which is a bipolar Montage, which is basically using two, two electrodes for the measurement. It can be along the anterior posterior longitudinal axis or the transverse axis. There are specific types of bipolar Montages that are used within the institutions. And channels are basically the channel that we are interested in, which is basically two, two electrodes or an electrode and a common reference electrode. You can see a referential montage here, which uses the auricular electrodes as a common reference for all other electrodes. And this is a bipolar montage in which we can see that each, each electrode is used as a reference for the previous electrode. Now this is an normal EEG, which shows the electrodes and the channels. The channels are depicted by the first electrode and the second electrode here, and they are listed on the top left. And the, we will have a scale showing the uh, magnitude of the scale, showing the magnitude of the waves and the time, time axis. Mm -hmm. For the interpretation, we will go through the waveform characters, wave distribution, wave localization, approach to easy interpretation and patterns. So the waveform characters, there are positive and negative deflections. Positive deflection uh, is taken as uh, the downward wave conventionally and the negative deflection is taken as the upward wave on convention. 
background activity is defined as any activity that is outside of the interest of the interpreter. Baseline is defined as an imaginary line that goes through the uh, that goes through the normal rhythm uh, that doesn't interfere with the uh, part of the part of the study that, that we are interested in. Attenuation is decrease in the amplitude of the uh, amplitude of the waveform that we are interested in. Monophasic wave will have only one wave, one peak, and the biphasic wave will have two waveforms in the opposite direction. They can't be in the same direction. They, then they will be con considered as two monophasic waves. For the triphasic wave, there will be three three waves, and each one shall have opposite opposite polarity. The complex is a wave. Uh, waveform which which can be biphasic or triphasic or polyphasic. In terms of polarity for the triphasic or biphasic or polyphasic waves, we use the one with the lowest amplitude as the polarity of the waveform. And there are waveform characters which we use to uh, use them as spike, which is basically a wave with less than seventy millisecond duration. Sharp wave which is coming from seventy to two hundred milliseconds. In a slow wave, which occurs for more than 200 milliseconds. The rhythm of the wave is a regular, uh, regular replication of the wave, which we see in the uh, regular replication of a series of waves, which can see in the EG. If a pattern is said to be regular if the waves are, uh, are a similar morphology and similar periodicity. Periodic waves are those which repeat on a timely basis along the EEG recording. Replication is the same, uh, is the same uh, as uh, when the uh, waveform uh, with similar morphology and similar characters is repeating on different parts of the EEG. Evolution uh, is an important characteristic of the waveform, which shows increasing amplitude or decreasing amplitude, increasing frequency or decreasing frequency of the waves along the EEG. And we can name the uh, we can distribute see the distribution of the EEG uh, wave and characterize them as focal, hemispheric, bilateral, or generalized. Focal is basically when it is present on only one electrode or the uh, the nearby the nearby electrodes within the immediate distance of it. Hemispheric is it is when it starts, uh, has more than two inter electrode distances, and bilateral is when it crosses. The coronal suture, but not the surgical suture. We will call it a generalized wave when it crosses both the coronal and surgical lines. This is a wave localization in a referential montage, and we can see that there are three deflections here, and the one with the greatest amplitude is taken as the focus of the uh, focus of the etiology in a referential montage. In a bipolar montage, the uh, for determining the focus of the focus of the etiology, we consider phase reversal. At T4 here, we can see that when it is combined with F8, we can see it's a positive wave because T4 is negative when compared to the F8. But when compared to the T T6, it's a negative wave showing that the T T4 is negative when compared to T6. So the T4, where the phase reversal is happening, is the focus of the etiology. This is a bipolar montage with extended focus, broad focal discharge. Here we can see that the phase reversal is happening but over the entire F8 and T4, which both have almost the equal amount of negativity or the equal amount of positivity. So the approach to easy interpretation or we have to see, consider the EEG and see which features are present in the EEG activity. And they use the features to determine which patterns may be the, uh, representing this unknown activity. And we use these patterns and consider the patient's context and uh, decide which patterns may be useful for differentiating the diagnosis. We will go through a list of patterns, the common ones. There are many other patterns, but due to time constraints, we will go only through a few. The alpha rhythm is the one 
with frequency of 8 to 13 hertz ex posterior gamming which is commonly seen in the posterior gamming so commonly seen in the occipital area it has an amplitude of 10 to 80 microvolt and it is most prominent with eyes closed can relax it can be suppressed with eyes open and when we are asleep absence uh, is seen in 2 to 5% of the population and it's common and it's inherited in an acosomal dominant way and those who are blind blind from an early age can't see uh, won't have an alpha wave this is an eeg depicting the no normal alpha rhythm and we can see the we can see the alpha wave with the alpha rhythm in various parts of the eeg and most com uh, most evident in the occipital area here o1 o2 this is called a bancard phenomenon of the uh, alpha rhythm when the uh, alpha rhythm of one side gazing gazing get blocked while asleep we can see that the alpha rhythm gazing get blocked on the right, right side of this uh, eeg and the unblocked side is the abnormal one there can be some asymmetry in the uh, alpha rhythm activity as shown in this uh, eeg and it is uh, normal as long as the uh, the e, the one with the lesser amplitude is within the is greater than 50% of the normal one usually the right one has a greater amplitude when compared to the left one as shown here the left one the odd numbers o1 has lesser amplitude when compared to the right alpha waves o2 there is a phenomena called alpha squeak which happens when the patient falls as uh, wakes up and when his uh, when he uh, wakes up and blinks his high his Uh, there will be a transient uh, alpha wave morphology with low amplitude and high frequency but after half a second or one to second it increases uh, uh, to the normal morphology and becomes normalized we can see that uh, this is the eye blink artifact and after that there is a, a inc uh, decrease in amplitude and increase frequency and it slowly normalizes to the normal one there are alpha variants where the slow a slow variant of alpha which uh, occurs in a 5 hertz the normal being the 8 to 8 to 13 hertz this is normal and there is a fast alpha variant where the where it can happen much faster as shown here which is around 18 hertz and when the uh, when the rhythm when the amplitude is greater uh, less than 50% of the uh, 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 the normal one it's called an abnormal alpha rhythm and you can see the see the here it's less than 50% of the normal one and in within when the patient is drowsy the alpha rhythm which is occipital predominant extends to the temporal and the temporal and the fr uh, frontal areas possibly This is called generalized alpha activity, which is seen in comatose patients. You can see alpha alpha waves through the all all the electrodes or the channels that we are observing, and not just the occipital waves. Beaker rhythm. It has a frequency of greater than 13 hertz, and it is normally seen in the frontal and central areas. It has increased activity with medications like benzodiazepine, barbiturates, and sedatives, and decreased activity. with cortical dysfunction like infarction abscess tumor etc and increased focal activity can be seen with cortical dysplasia tumor acrovenous malformation etc the skull defects of cataract surgery or trauma can cause focal high amplitude sharp beta activity this is called a breach effect and we will go through it after few minutes we can see the frontal central beta activity in this which is high frequency greater than 13 hertz and low amplitude when compared to the uh, alpha waves we can see the waves here predominant clear on the central region this is the generalized beta activity and the generalized most common reason for generalized beta activity we can see here are the barbiturates and benzodiazepines it can also be seen with certain conditions like hypothyroidism and uh, even hyperthyroidism 
breach effect is basically an inter making a small uh, it is limited to the small field and it has a sudden burst effect because because uh, it happens when the skull is open due to either surgery or trauma we can see this in the left central region here here Theca rhythm goes to the frequency of four to seven hertz and is present in healthy adults. However, not in excess, and it increases during drowsiness. It is observed to be associated with euphoric shakes and related to intoxication or exercise. We can see a theca rhythm here, which is most prominent on the uh, surgical C central electrode, which is the slope wave. It's a two second duration, and there is slight uh, left side dominance here. Like we can see, this is called the polymorphic theca activity, which uh, in which the amplitude and the frequency will have an overall asymmetry and uh, it is diffuse. Uh, it is present normally in infants, but in uh, adults, it can be the normal drowsiness or even encephalopathy. It is in, for non uh, non specific encephalopathy, which can be reversible or irreversible. Reversible being causes being hypothermia, metabolic disease, or cardiac use, and irreversible being any severe encephalopathy like uh, infarction, tumor. This is the rhythmic mic uh, temporal theta waves. It, uh, this is, we can see the rhythms, they are repeating in succession and they are repeating again and again in the channels. This is considered a normal variant now, but it was kind of. Uh, it was thought to be of uh, uh, related to epilepsy at one point. Galka activity, which is less than four hertz, four hertz frequency, and individual waves will have a duration greater than 250 milliseconds, or any combination of waves that has a duration of greater than 250 milliseconds. It commonly occurs during the non REM schedule three and during the encephalopathy. This is a polymorphic delta activity, which we can see as a few slow waves. They have very uh, low frequency and high amplitude, and they, we can't see any other waves here. This is uh, this can be happening in non rem case or the cortical dysfunction, uh, any cortical dysfunction. There are variant of uh, theta waves called the zeta waves. They are seen in acute cerebral lesions. They have a Z shape like shown here, and they, uh, they have been shown to be very specific for seizures, uh, tumors, hematoma, and focal trauma. There's frontal intermittent rhythmic galka activity, uh, which is shock, for, uh, which can be uh, considered shockly as IRDA. It's a highly non specific and uh, but it can uh, show that it can be any focal or diffuse abnormality, and it can be anything like toxic, metabolic, congenital, or degenerative abnormalities. We will go through some uh, EEG patterns that will relate to sleep. They are the sleep spindles. They are a burst of rhythmic activity at the midline and near the vertex, and commonly seen in non REM stage two and stage three sleep. They usually have a frequency of 11 and 16 hertz, and they Begin and end abruptly, like a burst. During the light sleep, they are uh, mainly over the vertex or the central part, and they have a higher frequency, tracking to 14 hertz. But when we progress to the deep sleep, they move anteriorly to the towards the parasagical and frontal parts, and their frequency decreases to 11 and 13 hertz. They are theorized to be role in memory consolidation, and it was proven with functional MRI. Like, uh, it, uh, it has a role in memory consolidation during sleep. Their presence in a comatose patient indicates be, uh, better, better prognosis. And when it is asymmetric before, uh, below two years of age, it's normal. But about two years of age, when it's asymmetric, it shows that it has thalamocortical dysfunction. We can see the sleep, sleep spindles here, which are most prominent over the uh, uh, over the central region and parasitical distribution. So as they are a spingle, it should have uh, at least triphasic wave, which uh, which will have a negative, a pos uh, positive wave, a negative wave, and a negative wave. 
K complexes are, uh, are another ways that are seen in the stage two and stage three of non-REM sleep. They are transients with a vertex localization. They are polyphasic and usually have two or three phases. Most commonly it occurs immediately uh, immediately precedes a sleep single. There are different definitions that uh, incorporate that there shall be a sleep, a sleep spingle uh, uh, after it to be defined as okay, complexes, but there are two standardized definitions that doesn't require the sleep spingle and the case work we are is commonly used. We can see the cake uh, complex now. A typical K complex has a low amplitude first wave and a uh, first negative wave, and then a positive wave and a high amplitude third negative wave. These are another way, uh, another waveforms that are commonly seen in sleep. These are the vertex sharp transients. They are a surface negative sharp wave, like uh, for a surface negative sharp wave, which means it will have a negative or upward stroke, and they are seen near the apex of the head. They are the uh, they are the first easy pattern to occurring drowsiness that are specific for the sleep. They most often occur spontaneously, but may also be evoked by sudden stimulation. We can see the uh, vertex sharp transients here in the central region between the C3 and C4 electrodes in the triphasic passion. They have two, uh, three peaks, two negative deflections and one positive deflection. Now we will go through the equal epileptic form patterns, which are, uh, which are uh, patterns on the EEG that we observe while the pa patient is in seizures. For the focal onset seizures, the patient, uh, it is simply the uh, seizure, uh, the EEG pack and the, the patient has while he is uh, seizing. There are two characteristics that are expected. They are almost always stereotyped across seizures for an individual patient, and they typically involve evolving rhythms, evolution that we you know, talked about before, or repetitive ways. In some cases, the evolution might not be seen and they can be seen in as desynchronization or regular repetitive spikes or regular rhythm slowing, but it is most commonly seen with focal motor seizures without cognitive impairment. Focal EEG waves uh, do, not, uh, do not differ in their EEG pattern without, uh, uh, depending on the local uh, focus or evolution. We can see a focal seizure here uh, the case mainly at the T2, T1 channel and the uh, F8 channel, F8, T4 here. And this can be seen over the next three, one, three slides. Uh, if we follow the T, uh, T2 and the F8 channels, we can see how the, uh, how it is, the amplitude is increasing and the frequency is decreasing over the, uh, uh, and evolving, the waveform is evolving. And finally, the waveform has been increasing to a much higher frequency and amplitude, as we can see in this image. And now we will go for the equal patterns for generalized onset seizures. They almost always have one of the three types of uh, generalized or bilateral patterns. They are generalized paroxysmal fast activity, uh, which have a very fast frequency, uh, high fast frequency in the beginning and a low amplitude. And this gradually becomes with something with slow, low frequency and high amplitude as the uh, wave progresses. And there is generalized spike and slow wave complexes. Uh, there is a, uh, there are they occur in succession and they uh, they have a long duration. They you are usually of triphasic morphology and they have a poly spike uh, initiation. Electrodecrement as the name shakes is seen when the, there is a sudden upgrade decrease in the entire uh anchor potentials uh, uh the electro electric potentials of over diffusely of the channels generalized uh, on six seizures typically end with either abrupt resolution without any evolution and evolution in waveform in frequency or disintegration of the pattern this is an equal on six seizure that we can follow over the next three slides and it can be seen mainly in the uh, poly, it can be seen in the form of poly spikes in these regions. And as it is generalized, we can see it over across most of the channels. And as we, uh, we can see, as it progresses, the waves uh, increase with frequency and uh, 
increase increase gamma amplitude and finally we can see this generalized chronic uh, seizure over the entire time here we can see an absence seizure which shows the generalized uh, spike wave uh, spiking slow wave pattern in the three three hertz waves which are commonly associated with them they are characteristic of absence seizures which are most prominent in the central region this is the electro decremental uh, on six seizure we can see after the spike that there, there is a sudden decrease in the amplitude of the uh, uh, of the electro channels here there is an another uh, there is an another seizure of peric but it has a slow wave uh, uh, it is uh, followed by slow wave that is not the electro decremental seizure now we go through the interictal uh, epileptic form patterns they are, uh, they are the most specific for diagnosing uh, most specific and sensitive for diagnosing epilepsy they have they should be having four characteristics they should be paroxysmal and distinct there should be an abrupt change in polarity and there should be the each glancing wave should be less than 200 milliseconds the discharge must have a physiologic field with with the discharge recorded from more than one electrode and it should not be a pattern of known benign variants we will list some known benign variants afterwards uh, most of the enterical uh, enterical epileptic form discharges have a negative polarity of the scalp and they are followed by a slow wave although these are not uh, criteria we can use them to identify them the focal interictal uh, epileptic form discharges they have four characteristic features they are sharply contoured electronegativity on cerebral surface like shaked before and disruption of surrounding background activity the field extends beyond one electrode uh, we can see here that the two temporal lobe ieds there are placed on the t3 region here and there are focal seizures showing a prominent spike component and a higher amplitude when uh, when compared to the background activity these are the temporal interictal uh, uh, epileptic form discharges we can see five components here 1 2 3 4 5 and each of them have uh, each of them are polyphasic and they are uh, they are repeated uh, they have a low uh, they are repeated along the eeg strip again and again and this is a bilateral independent interictal epileptic form discharge we can see that there are epileptic form discharges but they are independent of each other and they happen bilaterally they do not occur at the same time over all the electrodes in the case why they, call, they are called bilateral prolonged interictal epileptic form discharges are a specific type of discharges that are seen with a specific type of epilepsy called benign prolonged epilepsy childhood uh, we can see that they have a characteristic triphasic wave form here and uh, they uh, they occur with with the transverse dipoles like the electrodes that are on the same para coronal lines or the transverse line. and they occur in quick succession which are a characteristic of the rolangic seizures and there are other uh, uh, other incorrectal patterns like epileptic form discharges with prominent slow waves like we can see here in multi focal independent spike discharges uh, as we can see there are independent spikes that are occurring in different foci and they are independent in the sense that they don't occur at the same time and the incorrectal epileptic form discharges for the generalized seizures they typically occur as a complex with sharply concurve waves and is followed by a slow wave but they occur as bursts of success they may occur as bursts of successive spikes in the sharply concurred wave is a spike or poly spike the overall wave form is called spiking wave spiking dome and darting dome spiking slow wave complex usually has short duration than spiking slow wave complex and classically repeats as a train with a uh, frequency of you know, of waves of, of with frequency of 3 to 4 hertz this is a generalized incorrectal epileptic form discharge showing the spiking slow wave forms here we can see the spike followed by the slow waves the slow slow spiking slow wave uh, uh, incorrectal form epileptic form discharge is another epileptic form discharge seen with generalized chronic seizures and we can see the slow spike and the slow waves followed by 
how long my code other works. Here we can see a diffusely slow background activity case that is uh, interrupted by 2.5 her regular slow waves with spike notches in their upslopes. These slow spike and slow wave discharges are produced by slow slowing, slow slowing. And this is called as hypsaridemia, a specific type of uh, incorrectal form discharge seen only in infants below two years and uh, two years of age. Uh, but it can be rarely seen with in neonics also. It has a, uh, it's come from the Greek word uh, high and erdemia, which keeps erdemia, and uh, it, uh, um, it has a very high voltage and high amplitude, which we can see here. It can be it's usually between 200 to 400, but it can be as high as 1000 volts. And as we can see here, the potential is 150 microvolt, which is uh, more than the risk of the EGS, which we compared till now. There are other patterns, benign, uh, a lot of benign patterns, uh, some more pathological patterns, but uh, we don't have the time for to discuss it. While recording an EEG, it is common to encounter artifacts, which can be due to heart motion, heart pulse, or electrode motion, or uh, salt bridge phenomenon, uh, eye motion, muscle motion and the environmental aspects like noise from the other devices, et cetera. We can see here with a focal on seizure with temporal lobe followed by generalization, which is in the, in the, in the next page, we can see that the same seizure we can't interpret because of the muzzle artifact obscuring the entire EEG study. It's because of the general like tonic clonic seizures which have created the muzzle artifact. There are specialized techniques that we use to activate the seizures. They are uh, the, routinely one, the routine ones that are used uh, with every EEG study or hyperventilation and photic stimulation. There are other activation techniques, uh, including sleep and both sleep and sleep deprivation. Specific electro placement includes uh, placement of the electrodes in the sphenoid bone, ears, uh, uh, nasopharynx, et cetera. And some, there are uh, other methods of limiting electrode montages also. Hyperventilation uh, increases the rates of generalized discharges in childhood and abs childhood absence, epilepsy, and other generalized epilepsies. But it's, it has been shown to be a less productive in partial epilepsy. It's very effort depending, so the yield may vary according to the effort of the patient. The photic stimulation, the uh, photic stimulation is another common. Uh, uh, activation technique that is used in almost every EEG study. And it, it, it uses the uh, epilepsy in people with idiopathic generalized epilepsy and in those, and sometimes in those with frequent uh, focal seizures arising from the occipital lobe. The pitfalls are a normal EEG doesn't always exclude the epilepsy. And repeated EEGs or a, a long-term study like a 72 hour EEG might be required. Even then, we can't uh, rule out and seizure disorder with EEG. And, and abnormal EEG is not always characteristic of, um, uh, cannot always be called as, and uh, uh, cannot always be used to diagnose a pathology because uh, many children, you know, two to six percent have an abnormal EEG normally in a far lesser percent of adults around 0.5 to 1 have a, the same uh, norm, abnormal pattern when they are healthy. And there are variations uh, in interpretation depending on the interpreter. These are the referring books. Thank you.